Are you sick and tired of booting up Modern Warfare 3 zombies, going to that schematics crafting menu, and seeing that they're still on cooldown? It's the worst feeling in the world, dude. Some of them have, like, uh, three-day cooldowns. What's going on there? It's outrageous, but today, I have a solution to that problem that's also gonna allow you to farm all the schematics in the game, and we're gonna be doing that going from basically having everything on cooldown all the way to having a much more fully fleshed-out loadout. So this is, like, 15 videos in one, and if you like 15 videos in one, <laughs> then drop a like on the video and we'll jump straight in. So through the vid, we're going to be playing multiple games and doing different things in different games to really maximize our chances of getting all of the schematics that we need while relying on those cooldown schematics as little as possible. So for this first game, we're going to have a minimal loadout. Nothing fancy, no gold wrench, none of that stuff. So for this, for our insurance weapon, we're going to put on the RGL. We're going to put throwing knives and decoys into our equipment slots. Ether shroud for our field upgrade, unless you're playing co-op, in which case healing aura is fine. And if you got any sort of like spare stuff off cooldown that you can use here so things like maybe the jug perk or quick revive just for the faster health regen maybe phd phd would be really useful to have and just like a pap tier one crystal like the basic boring ones that you can farm pretty easily in the game that's enough like we don't need tier three armor here we don't need self revives we don't need anything crazy with our score streaks or whatever we're assuming that we're going in pretty much naked now in the match there are going to be kind of two phases we're going to have our pre tier three phase and our tier three phase itself so to begin with for this pre tier three phase we'll spawn in and run towards the nearest deliver cargo contract. On the way there, I would keep an eye out for any points rifts that you find, but otherwise just head straight to the contract. And grabbing the contract and completing it is going to do three positive things for you. Number one, it's going to mean that you've got a heavy vehicle to use for the rest of your game. Number two, you'll get some early game money to spend on PhD, assuming you didn't already spawn in with it. Like I said, I've assumed that you've spawned in pretty much naked here. And number three is that you've got a good chance of getting a self revive out of that rewards rift if you're playing solo. So that's a nice little slot filler as well. Once that's done and you have your vehicle, you can do a couple of little mini objectives to get your loadout filled up. So if you don't have a large backpack and you don't have a two or three plate vest, I'd suggest doing a Merc camp first to get yourself the two plate vest. The RGL is great for cleaning up Mercs. And then once you've done that, you can do a Merc stronghold super easily as well. Or if you've already got tier two armor and you want to sort of skip some steps here, you could just spend your contract money on a mercenary stronghold key card and then go through and do that super quickly. The RGL once again will absolutely clean up all the Mercs that attack you. And that'll give you a guaranteed three plate. So we're getting locked and loaded here really fast at the start of our game. With regards to the large backpack, I wouldn't stress about it too much early on because we can just buy that later with 10 grand. So hold your horses on that one, but definitely look for a medium backpack as you roam around because they're fairly common in the world. Now at this stage with a couple of little bits and pieces completed and that initial contract, if you still don't have PhD for whatever reason, maybe you spent the money on the Merc key card, I'd recommend doing one tier two deliver cargo and this will give you a vehicle refresh as well, which can be quite nice. And then you can just head straight into tier three and buy PhD from Wonderfizz there rather than having to find the actual PhD machine around the map. And it's just stress. You don't want that. And we're heading into tier three now anyway, so you can double dip here. So now that we're in the tier three zone, we're going to make sure that our RGL is pack a punch just to tier one. Do not pack a punch it any higher. You don't need to. It's a waste of points for now. And like I said, if you had one of those basic tier one pap crystals earlier, then that's even better. But because the RGL functions in a really unique way when it's at pap tier one, we we are going to do contracts that are specifically suited to the RGL. And so the rest of this match is going to be very different to what we're going to do in the next match, which we'll talk about in a couple of minutes. So the best way to navigate through tier three while running around is basically to shoot anything in front of you and stun them for a couple of seconds. Throwing knives will one shot and you'll be able to re-pick them up again, which is really nice, but it will take two on armored zombies. And if you miss, it can get a bit awkward. So just stunning them is usually going to be the better bet. Now, similar to our tier one and tier two zones, now that we're in tier three, we're going to be looking for deliver cargo once again because it's just so damn fast to farm. Once you grab it, run down this ramp, jump off the little ledge here and throw a decoy away from the garage doors and then hop in the LTV. Should be very easy. You can obviously use the RGL to stun stuff if you need to as well, but the decoy should be fine. And then so long as you keep left on the road here, and there are multiple routes, but I like this one, and you dodge the zombie spawns so that your vehicle doesn't get too broken, you should be able to drive straight into the massive horde of zombies at the end and complete the contract and grab your 
rewards. Now, in order to loot that rift, I'd really highly recommend throwing another decoy if you have one, just because sometimes it can get a little bit sketchy. But if you don't have any, you can kill zombies with throwing knives and you can stun them with the RGL as well. But I wouldn't try and kill them with the RGL here because, again, we're only really bothering to pap it to tier one right now. It's a utility weapon after all. So just very quickly, stun, maybe chuck a throwing knife or two, loot, and get out of there running up the hill into the main courtyard area where there's a weapon stash contract often, and you'll also be able to refill your ammo to get more decoys and throwing knives. If you do have a weapon stash, fantastic. It's super straightforward to do this. You can just drill the safe and then hop up on this ledge here as quickly as possible, and then just start stunning the zombies as they mantle up. It's very straightforward. You've got PhD at this point, so fire from the dogs isn't going to hurt you, and you can just keep on going, and then as soon as you get overrun, you can hop out of the window, throw a decoy nearby, and you don't need to run inside through the door here. Instead, you can hop through one of the windows as zombies are only going to path through the door. And so the windows are going to be a more reliable, clear way to get into the building. And you just need to rinse and repeat this once or twice and the contract will be completed. Another contract you might have in the vicinity if you don't have your weapon stash is the Outlast contract. They are just as easy, thankfully, and they can spawn in a couple of different locations. So keep an eye out in various areas of tier three for them. One of the spawns is actually in the same place that the weapon stash is and the strat's the exact same. And there's another one that is located a bit further away, kind of on the opposite side of the island. But again, it's a very similar deal. Just use the RGL to stun zombies and you're golden. After a couple of these, you'll be able to buy yourself the tier three backpack like I mentioned before. And if you get any other weapon upgrades as you play, if you get any legendary wrenches, if you get any higher tier pap crystals, etc., do not use them. Because again, we don't care about kill power with the RGL. We care about stun power. And we'll save those crystals for our next match and stockpile things so we can use them in the future. Also, if you're waiting for your contracts to come off cooldown and it feels like they're taking a while or they're just not spawning in entirely, pick up some of the other contracts in the area, such as a bounty contract, but then just cancel it straight away. And this will open up availability for other contracts to be able to spawn in. Do this until the end of your game and then extract. Nice and simple. You should successfully have completed a whole bunch of tier three contracts that game. And that will mean that even though your purple ether tool or your pap two crystal might be on cooldown in the menus, we've been able to farm that stuff. And so we can now bring them into our next match and be significantly more powerful. So for our second of three games that we're going to be covering here, we're going to be going with the Lockwood shotgun as our insurance weapon. And if you need loadout details for this or the attachments, etc., I've got a video linked in the description and on screen right now that you can click. Our equipment is going to be slightly different. We're going with Semtex and decoys this time. Ether Shroud once again for field upgrade. And then in an ideal world, if you manage to farm a PAP2 crystal from last game or a purple ether tool, which you'll often find in tier three, then this is is the game to bring them in for. And I'd also say any extra perks you can bring, such as Stamina Up, Speed Cola, or Deadshot, would also be really useful for this particular match. So on game start, we're going to be looking for a bounty contract. Should be really easy with the Lockwood. It's a powerful weapon. And if you've managed to bring in a crystal or a wrench of some kind, use that straight away to give yourself a power boost. And doing that bounty will also, again, give you a self-res if you don't have one. Now, if when you spawn in, there are no bounties nearby, you're absolutely valid to just do a deliver cargo. The benefit of having a vehicle from that is still powerful in this match, just like it was in the previous one. So that is a valid choice too. Once that's done, we're going to go to this loot spot at the southern border of the tier two zone. This contains a lot of cash spawns, which are really important for us in this match. Uh, they're inside and they're outside the big building. And you're going to be scouring for turret circuits especially, but then also any extra gear upgrades you might need, extra armor plates, perks, things like that. Once you're done at looting there, refill your ammo at the nearest cash. And now you could head into the tier three zone, but first it might be worth doing a couple of extra bounty contracts in tier two just for some extra cash. And the good thing about this is that if you're missing certain schematics in your menu, so for example, if you don't have jug or PhD unlocked, this will actually only ever drop from tier two contracts, not from any others. And so the little method that we're about to do is going to help you farm those. And that's why I said earlier that this would help you farm all the schematics in the game because we're not only looking for one one specific schematic loot pool, but actually we're dipping into all the different loot pools. And if you're curious which schematics drop from which places, I've got a full ultimate guide breaking that down in detail that you can click in the description and once again on the corner of the screen. So for farming those contracts, I would pick up a bounty, kill the target with your now overpowered setup, and then just pick the next closest bounty. And then you can rotate into tier three 
free, go to Wonder Fizz and top up on any perks that you're missing. And then if your desire is to still keep farming for those Jug or PhD schematics, then I would rotate back to tier two and just keep on slapping bounties. They are extremely quick. And especially if you're in a team, they can be crazy fast. But I'm sort of assuming that most of you are solo for this video. So even if you're solo, I would say do a bunch of bounties and use deliver cargoes as ways to rotate around the map when you start running out of bounties in your nearby vicinity. However, assuming that you do want to do some tier three farming in this match as well, once again, the Lockwood has a specific use case that's very different to the RGL. And as such, we're going to play in a different way to maximize the benefits that the weapon gives us. Specifically, while the RGL was good at stunning zombies, the Lockwood is good at sending them into an early grave. Or is it a late grave with a zombie? I don't know. Anyhow, remember earlier we were looting those loot caches to see if we could find any turret circuits? Now is the time that we're going to use them inside the tier three zone. Specifically, you're going to want to look for a bounty contract. That's the best thing to use the turret circuits on. And if the bounty doesn't spawn next to a turret circuit on the map, don't cancel it. Take a look at what the thing is that you need to take down. And if it's a disciple, a mimic, or a mangler, you don't need to cancel. You can just kill it with the Lockwood. It's strong enough to do that. And if you've rinsed a couple of contracts earlier in your game, you should also be getting towards the point where you can get your tier three pack a punch on the gun if you still need it. This is also part of the reason we brought Semtexes in because they are really strong on these special zombies as long as it's not an abomination. And if it's an abom, sure, you could have brought Thermite in, for example, to take out those heads. It's kind of a matter of preference, but I really like Semtex here for all the other bounties that you could potentially get in tier three. However, if you're having trouble while taking those contracts down, you can throw decoys, remember, use your ether shroud when things get a little bit hairy. And if you decide, eh, actually, this is taking too long and it's just too sketchy, you can always cancel. There's no shame in doing that. Just move on to the next bounty contract and hope that that next one spawns next to a turret and that will get you an instant completion and all the money. In between doing those bounty contracts, I'd say that spore control are really good to look for. You can stash inhibitors in your rucksack so that you don't need to keep going back to the little toolbox to grab more. And while you're doing that, just make sure that you store your decoys in your backpack instead of leaving them on the floor because they will despawn otherwise. And the reason that spore control is so good here is the Lockwood is perfect for one-shotting zombies that are in your way while you're running around. And you need to be pretty mobile here and the Lockwood is also a pretty mobile weapon. Another reason why having Semtex here is useful is it can clear a horde pretty easily. And once you finish the contract, remember to throw a decoy ideally to loot and then go replenish your decoy and Semtex count by hitting an ammo cache. Now, throughout all of this, if you find a gold wrench, right, a legendary wrench, do not use it. I know it's counterintuitive, but the Lockwood has enough damage output that you simply don't need to use it on that weapon. And in fact, if you found a tier three pap crystal, I would also not use that either because you're going to be in enough of a flow earning points here that you can just buy tier three pack a punch and save that stuff for your next game. And by rinsing these tier three contracts and by having done that in the previous match, you're very likely to have ended up with one of these either tier three crystals or a legendary wrench at some point. And that's perfect because we can save them to use in game three, which we'll talk about now. So you've finished game one and game two. You've built up that loadout in a really powerful way. You've got your tier three armor. You've got your large backpack. You've got a bunch of upgrades to use. You've got a load of acquisitions that you've been able to extract with. And this means we can change up our loadout once again to the following. Our weapon this time is going to be the Ram 9. This is one of my favorite weapons of choice. I actually talked about it in my top 10 pack-a-punch weapons in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies video, linked once again on screen and in the description down below. So we'll be using the Ram 9 with Semtex, decoys, Ether Shroud, Brain Rot if you have it. It'd be really nice, but if not, no worries. You can just get it in game. And then if you've got any of those gold upgrades, those gold acquisitions here, so gold Ether Tool, Flawless Crystal for PAP Tier 3, Gold Armor as well. Any of those sorts of things. We're going to be bringing those in. And also, because the cooldown on perks is pretty low, from that first match, you may actually have some of those perks off cooldown now that you've already used here. So whatever perks that you can bring in, we're going to do that to fill up the rest of our slots. Now, if you are still lacking in any of these areas, like you only have a Tier 2 Crystal instead of Tier 3, don't worry, just bring in the most powerful stuff that you can. For this match, we are going all out. When you spawn, head straight to that loot spot that we talked about in the previous match in the tier two zone and grab yourself turret circuits, brain rot if you can find it or another ammo mod, that's okay. And as many perks as you can get too. Then go straight to the tier three deliver cargo contract if it's there. And if it is, do it. That's the first thing, first priority in your game. But if it's not there, cancel the ACV escort contract that is probably elsewhere. And that might make the deliver cargo contract appear. However, if that's also not present in your game, do something else. Just any other contract nearby, the easy 
easiest thing that you think that you can complete inside the tier three zone specifically. And bear in mind, you're going to be low on perks here probably compared to your full perkaholic loadout. So play it a little safe. Maybe spore control could be a good one, but deliver cargo is definitely the best option because it's just so crazy safe and it's a great one to start a match with. Once you've done that first contract, your priority should be weapon stash contracts, I would say, and outlast as you can do those in this building, which is super easy. The strat really is just to camp on this ledge and shoot stuff that climbs up. Like making zombies stagger and mantle and fall over and stuff in this game is so powerful. That's why the RGL is so good. And that's also why this strat works so well too, because they're mid climb when you're taking them out and it makes your life really easy. Now, if Outlast is in the other building here, you can find a bunch of caches in there that have turret circuits. Those are useful to stash up on or stack up on or whatever the expression is. And I also would actually recommend buying Death Perception at some point as you play here, just to find even more caches as you go. Now, you might be wondering why I suggested Brain Rot here. Like, why not some of the other more powerful AATs? And it's simply because it's quite useful to have a distraction zombie at the start of all of these encounters. And so when you reckon your Brain Rot is off cooldown, I'd actually suggest you shoot whatever special zombies are nearby first in case you can turn them. Because then, hey, you've got a Disciple on your team or a Mangler or whatever, instead of just a little slug crawler zombie or something, which is hardly doing anything. Now, next in our kind of hierarchy of priorities here, with our max power loadout, our bounty contracts. And the easiest way to do those, again, is always going to just be the turret circuits. And depending on your weapon, you might also be able to take out other stuff too. For example, if you have brain rot and you're taking out mimics, that's going to be a really strong combo. But I wouldn't get too hung up on doing loads of bounties because they can just end up a bit fiddly. And sometimes you can get in more dangerous situations than I would like. Now, at this point in your game, you're probably finding that your money is starting to stack up and you don't have a lot to spend it on. So I would recommend buying a couple of sentry guns from the buy station. And that's going to mean that it's easier to take out your bounties if you aren't near a turret spawn. And you can just whack them down to help with crowd control when you're doing other stuff as well. Occasionally, you'll also get a jug suit from your rewards rifts and you can use those against bounties as well. And as you go through all of these, you may find that you actually get a dark ether sigil from one of the rifts. If you don't know what I'm talking about here, there's a specific way that you have to unlock these. I've got a guide for it linked in the description and in the corner of the screen right now. That's crazy. Who would have guessed? So you'll need to do that little mini Easter egg in order to get the sigils unlocked. But if your game is dropping you sigils, that means you've done that Easter egg and you can just go ahead and grab one of them and hold on to it to the end of your match. Now you've got kind of a forking choice to make here. You can either say, I'm happy to just do dark ether stuff and get dark ether schematics, or you can say, I want to do red worm and I want to try and also get the dark ether. If you want to do red worm, you'll need to end your tier three farming a bit earlier so that you can go around the map grabbing those USBs. And then you're going to want to take out the Red Worm at the very end of your match. And then as soon as it's dead, get yourself over to the Dark Ether portal and spend your sigil to get out of there. And I know that sounds like it's a crazy thing to squeeze in in one go, but I've done it multiple times. I've got streams where I've done this. I've got videos on it. I talk about how exactly to do the Red Worm also in my ultimate guide to all the schematics. So like I said before, you can click the link in the description to go watch that if you need to. But there are also probably a bunch of you that don't really care about the Red Worm. You just want to do the Dark Ether stuff. So like I said, we're going to use our sigil to go into the Dark Ether. But before we go, I would highly recommend going to a buy station and buying as many Casimirs as you can fit into your inventory. And that way, once you get into the Dark Ether, you can throw Casimirs at each Ether Extractor, for example. And that's going to mean that those are really, really easy to take out. Then when you're doing your Escort, you can use any turret circuits you have remaining, and you can use Casimirs to distract everything, especially on that final little holdout before the ACV Escort completes. And the Outlast is just easy, really. So just do that, and you'll unlock the rest of the schematics that you need. Now, if for any reason you're struggling in the Dark Ether, whether it's just that things are taking too long or you're failing the ACV Escort contract over and over again, and you don't know how to get through it easily. I've got an in-depth video breaking down a whole bunch of Dark Ether specific tips, which is linked on screen right now. And I guarantee you watch that and you're going to be wondering why you were struggling there in the first place. Like it's going to make your life super easy. So click through to it now. I'll see you there.